Hey guys, I'm be showing you how I um, personally do my um, my material setup when it comes to Poyomi um, materials. Um, uh, before we get started though, anyone that is actually exporting their textures out of Substance Painter, um, Poyomi in his server actually has a proper um, setup or export settings for um, his shader. So if you actually click on that and download this, and I'm gonna show you how to import this into Substance Painter real quick before we get started. Um, if we go to your browser, you downloaded it from, and then you can just drag and drop that download in here. And then um, it should pop up in here now. If you drag it into the asset area, it should allow you to drop it in, and then this'll pop up. Um, if you wanna name it, you can go in here and name whatever you want the export name to be. If you don't, you can just leave it alone, and it should be named Unity, um, Poyomi version 8, version 7, extra maps. And then, um, so if you want to leave it, you can just leave it alone. And we go to the import um, resources too, and then you can import to your current session, but I usually just do it to your library, and that means that it pretty much carries on with every project that you use in the future. So you just click on that and then import it. Um, and then once you do that, you can actually export this and then on your output template just make sure it's set to whatever you named it and if you didn't name it um, this is what the name will be for that and then um, you just of course set it to whatever file you want to export it to and then you export it and that is done all right let's go back into unity and um, I'm going to be also recommending for any type of material setup um, delete the direct light and we're going to be using a different type of skybox we're going to be using an hdri um, and what hdris are which i'm going to go ahead and pull this up so if we go back to polyhaven so polyhaven is a website that actually has these hdris and they're all free um, so what hdris are is pretty much skyboxes that contain proper lighting data and like reflection data so you can actually truly see what your materials are doing when you're making these adjustments because whenever you have that basic skybox set up it is really hard to tell anything you're actually doing so um go ahead and go to um polyhaven um or you can just type in hdr haven and it'll actually just be the it should be the first link it'll take you here um or actually i'll just leave a link in the description if i remember so just check down there and i should have a link for it um but once you do that, um, come into the HDRI section and then go to, um, let's see, studio. You wanna do a studio setup and you wanna try and find one that doesn't have any type of multicolor light setup. You kinda of just want like a single color, like a white light setup. Honestly, like these studio ones are perfect right here with spotlights and stuff. So any one of these I would recommend, but like I said, just anything that is, is more of like a singular color light um, go for it um, and how you download them if you don't know you just click on it and then uh, make sure you have it set to the 4k make sure it's on um, XCR and you can download that and then once you download it um, you can drag it into unity and then um, how to actually apply that into unity it's very simple you just create yourself a new material and I'll name it skybox just like so and then we will go to the skybox section of material here. We'll go to panoramic. And then um, you can see I have a lot of HDRIs. These are HDRIs I bought off of ArtStation, but all the ones that are in a HDRI Haven, they're perfect and they're good enough for material setup. So you don't have to worry about having any special paid for skyboxes or HDRIs. There's no point. Um, but anywho, just select the one that you got. I'll uh, do this one, and then all you gotta do is just look up in the sky, drag it up there, and then it'll apply it. Um, then as I step our material, you actually see that um, this will actually display all your like shading and stuff a lot more than it normally would. And you can also change the exposure. Um, right now you won't be able to see much changes on the uh, hoodie, because it's right now this is just the base color on it, there's no normal maps or anything on it. So you don't really see too much of the shading going on until we actually start messing with the material. Um, also take note, um, that material that you, or the HDR you imported, if you click on that actually, um, set it to 4K, 
and you can set this to high quality and then crank it up to the max um, compression quality for the crunch compression um, and then once you uh, do that it'll it'll look a lot better and it'll actually give you the proper you know 4k resolution um, other than that I'm gonna go back to the hoodie and we can get started after that and also when it comes to the textures of your hoodie I recommend going to all of these and actually setting them keep them at 2k for the love of god do not set them to 4k first of all 90% of the headsets out there does not support 4k textures and second of all having 4k textures can actually be very unoptimized to the point where it's actually worse performance than you having like a 500,000 polygon model it is very harsh on your um your vram and stuff like that so please for the love of god don't use 4k textures they're horribly unoptimized um anyways on with rambling about that just set to 2k high quality and then crank up the compression quality um and then that will fix like sometimes in like black and white textures you'll see them some weird like almost like rgb artifacting um it'll fix that and it'll kind of you know properly make the textures look the way they should um other than that let's actually get started this material so um right now i'm using poyami tune so poyami version 8.1 tune um and you can use a pro shader if you want it doesn't matter they're both the same honestly recommend donating to him getting pro because if it wasn't for him you would not have this amazing shader that has all these cool features so you should definitely go down to his patreon just give him give him some money get his pro shader because it's totally worth it um anywho let's go ahead and get started using toon shader drag in your normal map and then also um i already set the material in the past so if you actually um drag in for the first time it might tell you to actually fix material just press that fix button and you should be good to go it'll probably set it up for the um the shader um so let's go ahead and drag that into normal map into normal map and then we're going to go to shading light data drag in your ambient occlusion right into there and then now we'd be going to uh let's see here shading um for all my clothing i use the multi-layer math shading type and i will set all this to black just like so um and then as you can see wait do i not have my material on here oh i never had on the whole time no okay that was weird must be another material but anyways once you do that once you put the shading on you should see this when you crank up the border it's pretty much what it's doing is it's pretty much putting the sh the, the shadow on your your model here and actually if i kind of show you now if i go to the skybox and rotate it you can see it actually updates the shading on the model um just the exact reason why i love using hdr is you can actually fully display what's going on through your, um, your material but um i tend to get my skybox where i want it when it comes to the rotation of light so i kind of want the front of my um object that i'm working on to be completely lit um and then i'll just adjust that shade in the modifier until i get what i like in it so i crank up the actual shading until I see where I want the shadow to be. Don't worry about being so harsh at this moment in time. Just get it to where you where you like it. So I just try to get it personally to where it starts to get in these crevices and stuff. And then I usually call it off about there. Um, once you do that, um, um, depending on like if you have a more toony style of um, like character or assets more tuning you can actually keep it a little more harsh because that harsh sliding might look good um but other than that you can do that i tend to just blur it all the way out um oh actually that's the border blur there we go and you can see it tends to actually soften everything up while kind of keeping the actual shading going and then um once you're done doing that if you need to fine tune the color you can as you can see, like if you're doing a tune style model, and you kind of just want the shading kind of like a darker color of what's already here, you can easily do that, as you can see. Um, but I just, for the 
realistic style, I just stick with the the black. So it's a tone up just a little bit. I like what I see here. The shading looks really nice and smooth, so I'm going to keep it just like that, and we're going to continue on with the next part. Um, so we're going to go to Reflection Specular, and this is where the rest of your Koyami PBR maps are going to take into effect. Um, if you also don't have, like if it's an asset that you bought and you don't have these Poyami style exports, don't worry about it. You should be able to use your existing maps. Um, I'll kind of guide you of what to use for what area. So anyways, for the Poyami setup, pretty much it's simple as metallic goes into metallic. So if you actually, hold on, if you open this up, you'll see all these things you can import. Um, so take that metallic goes into metallic. Smoothness goes into smoothness. Reflection into reflection. And then you don't got to worry about specular. Um, and then uh, for people that do not have the um, the play on me exports, metallic, you should have a metallic map. It goes straight into metallic. Um, roughness goes into your, um, your smoothness map. And that's really all you should really have when it comes to that. You can come. Once you're done, you press confirm merge. And um, once you do that, what that is actually going to do is, as you can see, it makes a new material in here. And um, that pretty much combines all those maps we put in into one material. So it actually saves a lot of space on your model, which is really cool. Um, it's like one material is actually like 2.80 megabytes. So that times three, you know, it stacks up pretty quick. Um, so it's a really good way to, uh, to actually, uh, you know, save space. Oh, I forgot to turn on my bed, but, um, if I actually remove that real quick, um, when you turn it on, it's going to look like this, but just don't worry about it. It's just cause you have to actually have to come in here and, you know, properly import those textures and they'll properly do what it's supposed to do in here. Um, and then I'm going to actually switch to a different asset real quick to show you exactly how the metallics and stuff work because my hoodie does not have much shiny metallic -y stuff on it so I'll show a perfect example with my glasses um, so let's go ahead and go into the reflection and specular area all right so um I'll kind of explain what each slider does um, from what I've found out by messing with it for a while so reflection strength that's pretty much going to be making what's supposed to be reflective and shiny, reflective and shiny. So um, adjust it to right where you actually start to see what needs to be metallic-y or whatever, or just shiny in general, pop up. Once you see that pop up, try not to adjust it any higher because I've found out um, when you're in game, and you have this cranked up above Bolivian, um, it tends to make objects that are not even supposed to be shiny look really, really weird in dark environments. It almost looks like a weird, like, reflection version of, like, a rim light. It looks horrible. So just crank it up just to where you start to see your stuff actually look the way it's supposed to. And then um, after that, you can take the specular strength and kind of boost that. You pretty much take whatever it grabbed and it will boost it. Um, so that's how you kind of make things look a little more intense rather than cranking it up in here. Um, so do that. The metallic is going to make your, your metal stuff look a little more shiny. So you can see it kind of darkens up my glass and makes my metal stuff look a lot more metallic-y. And then smoothness, what that does is I crank it all the way up. Oh, all the way up, there we go. You can see it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one reflection of whatever light is around me. So if something's like actually like really like shiny, like polished metal, you know, you want to crank it all the way up. So it's like a one on one reflection. But if it's something that's kind of like dull, you kind of crank it down to kind of blur that out. As you can see, it looks really good on the metal and stuff. But with my map, I should keep it for the most part decently dull. But while the glasses actually have that more reflective look. Um, but yeah, that's how you pretty much adjust this when it comes to your um, your metallics and all that. So now, 
Uh, last and final thing I always do when it comes to clothing, and I only do it on clothing because um, on skin and stuff it tends to not act right, it tends to act very weird, um, is I use the um, environmental rim light. So I turn that on, you can see what it's doing here, it's kind of grabbing like edges of things and kind of giving it a highlight to it, and um, this is pretty good for like worlds that have like um, like it could be anything you're close to that's kind of emissive it'll kind of shine that on your model and kind of give it like an edge it almost looks like kind of like a rim light glow but it's actually meant for the environment um which is really cool um, i tend to just turn it on leave it alone the settings for me personally it's good enough as is so i tend just to leave it alone um but other than that when it comes to the basic setup materials it's really about it um if i can go into the skybox i can rotate it you can see looks pretty good pretty smooth and depending on your style you might have to do some adjustments if you're doing like you know tune shading or or whatever um, but yeah this is how I set up my materials um, if you actually like the hoodie you see here um, before this video is up I should have it on my store so I'll put a link down below if you want to check out my store and check out some of the assets I make um, but other than that um, if you have any other like uh, tutorial suggestions that you want or like tutorials you want to see I also have my discord down below you can actually go in there and I have an actual channel for tutorial suggestions so you go down there you can type in you know anything you want if you want to see some stuff in substance painter blender um, even even unity or whatever just anything you've seen me do in the past and you kind of wonder how I've done it just go down there and just type it in um, if I if I um, have enough like recommendations or whatever, not recommendations, but uh, people actually want to see that, they react to it, or if I personally think it's a really good idea, I'll highly recommend on uh, making a video on it. But other than that, um, this is really about it, and I hope you guys have a good one.